what was the similarities and differences between him and Parcells and Pete Carroll? And and was was to you, and then you mm-hmm. went to the Jets and you went right. to the, the right. Chiefs. Mm-hmm. How was his ship? How was that? Man, I'm, I tell you what, you know, come in and get What made dra- him different? What made Parcells different is, you know, Belichick. he was a ma- – well, I'm going to start with Parcells because that's okay. who drafted me. So Parcells was the master – manipulator when it comes to the mind and like you like he'll make you so pissed off psychologically he'll you'll run a run through a wall you want to prove to him that Phil Simms used to tell me crazy stories about that he he told me he told me I was gonna be the first first round of NFL history to get cut in training camp (laughs) that's the part he's like what the fuck is that like you're gonna be the freeze he called me to the side he's like listen right now you're working on being the first first rounder in the history of the NFL to get cut in the middle of training camp (laughs) I'm sitting there like and my that stupid ass, you know, at the time, you know, just being me from out club, I'm like, well, do what you got to do. You know, like, come on, I'm going whoop all the ass. Do what you got to do. Stupid, you know what I mean? But that's just, that's you who know, made you, you though. That, that's that's just Challenge. who I was, you know what I mean? And then eventually, you know, he was like, uh, man, he, he was the best, but he always rolled me. And it was one particular game where now I'd established myself as kind of a physical and aggressive. And he was like, you know what? You got everybody scared of you out there. I'm like, and he said, but you, this week, this guy's going to kick your ass. So he was talking about Michael Irvin. We was going down to play the Dallas Cowboys. And Michael Irvin, I think he had just hit, you know, like I said, Aeneas Williams, the one of the greatest. You know what I mean? Look up to Aeneas, trained with him. But he gave he gave Aeneas the business. You know what I mean? It was like nine catches or something, like like 200 some yards. And shit. I'm like, damn. So Parcells challenged me saying, if he do that to Aeneas Williams, because he said, you're damn sure no Aeneas Williams. <laughs> you know, that's what Parcells told me. He going to kick your ass. But guess what? I'm putting you on him. You know, you think you good. So, man, went out there, ended up having two picks. Uh, you know, I think you got defensive player of the week, all that stuff. But I wasn't even thinking about playing, you know, Michael and the challenge of him. I was sitting there thinking I got to prove Parcells wrong for fucking with me. You know, I'm going to show you that I'm not the one. And I had to take it out on Michael at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's how – my mentality was, but Belichick, you know, that's how he got the best out of you. Belichick, he's going to sit you down because he was my DB coach, which I loved, by the way, because you had to do le- the least amount of studying when he's your coach because he done did it all. Everything that he says is going to happen is going to happen. It's going to be one of two things. And what I really fell in love with the way he coached, he was my DB coach. We were playing the Saints. He said, look, if they line up in this formation – Tight end here, guy on the top of the numbers. He's if he's lined up on the top of the numbers, he's gonna do a curl. And my thing was, I didn't want to be on the wrong end of highlights. What if he run a curl and go? He's not gonna do it. If he run a curl and go, it's on me. So I said, shit. Seen the formation is coming. Literally. Bam. Sure enough, he did exactly that. Came in, jumped in front of it, pick, and it was like shit. So now, when. We're moving. Belichick had you in such a great position mentally that you went into the game so confident and saying that if anything happens, put it on him. But guarantee this is going to happen. And that's how he was as a coach. So when he left and came back, we thinking like, that's our boy. Man, me and lawyer called him illegally, I might add, you know, at the time because (laughs) we ain't supposed to, you know, contact him and stuff like that. But that was our guy. That was our coach. So when he came back, Man, we were so happy, and then when Bill walked in the building, we trying to go do like the the group hug type of. He the head coach now. I'm like, oh, Bill done got a new check, got brand new and shit. But he got brand. He done got brand new. <laughs> it ain't the same. But now you had to realize, and it took us a minute that he's not our coach anymore. He's our coach, and he has to sit there and you know treat everything and conduct himself in a certain way. But what he does from a game plan perspective. I've never been with another coach or another organization that is that prepared at all times. And he made you feel comfortable. Even his adjustments, this is what we're going to do. Bam. Just You just got to be smart. In training camp, we will see shit that we ain't seen in eight weeks. We going back to some certain training camp. You got to be like, what? We ain't played that since training camp. But for this particular game, or we going at halftime, he comes back. This is what it is. So I think that separates Bill from everyone else is his adjustments and how he looks at the game, you know what I mean, from offense, defensively. He used to have to leave to help Charlie Weiss. He would leave our defense to me. We'd be in there by our damn self. Ain't nobody getting coached because he up there telling the offense what the other defense is doing. 
He had to leave the meeting so many times just to go up there and help the offense by looking at the defense. He was that much of a genius when it comes to a football mind. Pete Carroll, I like Pete. Pete gave me the bag. He pushed for me to get the bag, but he was a DB guy. But I think his personality didn't mesh well with a lot of the other guys because we all interviewed. I interviewed because ain't nobody know going to hire Belichick. I was like, man, I like Pete. So when they came down, Bobby Greer and all that gym, you know, scrap, I was like, man, we went to the playoffs. I felt somewhat responsible because I gave up the touchdown. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I did. I gave up a touchdown. I was sick to who I think is one of the best ever when it comes to me, you know, matching up. That damn Jimmy Smith was an animal, bro. Jimmy so I, Smith. I just want to put that out there. So, But Pete Carroll, man, the happy-go-lucky guy that just didn't sit well with the rest of the guys because no matter what, come on, guys, don't you feel it? Don't you feel it? That rah-rah. Yeah, you know, he was rah-rah like that. You know what I mean? You're I like coming it. from Parcells to tell you exactly. you're about to get cut in the first <laughs> yeah. fucking training like camp. Days. Yeah, exactly. This guy's smacking his gums saying it's going to be a great day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was it was a totally different energy. You know what I mean? And then you get back to Bill. who's in that similar. Similar, more similar to Parcells. Know, Parcells, you know. And Bill, don't get me wrong, he wanted outside of business. Me and Bill ain't never had a problem outside of contract and business. You know what I mean? But you got to understand. We're all independent contractors, you know that, yeah. at the end of the day. We're on the team, but when we're talking about this and we have discrepancies about this, he has to work for himself in the organization. You have to work for yourself as an individual, you yeah. know, as a – because, hey, it's short-lived, you know what I mean? But anything about that, he he'll going to drink with you, he's going yeah. to he have a beer with you, he's going to laugh, have a good time, all and, that good And stuff. that's, you know, I mean, Bill's a computer where, like, if he's doing work, he's just thinking about work. And the one thing that he was always, that I always liked with Bill, he was honest with you. Right. I, which he would try to be a little overly honest just to prove his point on certain <laughs> things. Look, I'm not going to pay you fucking $10 million. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, $12 yeah. $12 million. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. fucking 33. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you're you not going to be able to walk in three yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he, he, he will tell you he, that. He would tell you that shit. He would tell you that, yeah. But what you said about him preparing a team and 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 saying it's going to be on me if it if it doesn't go this way. Mm -hmm. There are countless times where you know remember he'd have those team meetings cuz it was probably the same and he'd give you the keys. Look fellas, mm -hmm. we just need to do this, mm -hmm. this, right. this and right. if we do that, this is going to happen. Right. We'd sit there and be listening to this shit and then you'd watch that on a Monday when you're watching yeah. film, mm -hmm. everything that he said happened. Right. And it, it exactly to how he exactly, said exactly. I'm saying he took he took that he made it easier to to do your job yeah. because he did all the hard work. A lot of guys don't want to study that film, so you basically got a coach as a walking cheat sheet. You know, I mean, you can go ask him anything out of the blue. He gonna already know what it is. I'm sitting there like, it's at a point where like. How do you know all that? You watched us. You you hear offensive guys asking him stuff, and what do you, I'm like, how do you got time to do all this shit and know all this? He's a, he's a savant. One hundred percent a cheat sheet, but he's an asshole cheat sheet. But we I loved him. 